Hey, what's going on everybody? It is Nick here, back with a brand new video. Today we're going to be discussing some XRP news, kind of going in depth on a few things as well, uh, and pretty much kind of talking about the overall structure currently. Um, but before I do jump into this video, I do just want to say for anybody that is brand new to the channel, definitely consider subscribing and turn notifications on as I do upload pretty much almost daily and I do upload multiple times a day as well. Also, for anybody who is not new or just kind of you know, here as well. If you guys do enjoy this video, definitely leave a like as it does help the video get out to a lot more people. And I also will greatly appreciate it. But let's get into this video. So this is a quote from Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO of Ripple. Uh, and he's basically quoting WSJ editorial page where it's saying we shouldn't assume we need to reinvent the regulatory regime just for crypto, writes Jay Clayton and Brent J. McIntosh. And Garlinghouse is pretty much quoting this saying, my main takeaway from this, Jay Clayton is joining the chorus of voices saying there is and has been a lack of regulatory clarity for crypto and that stifles innovation here in the US. Definitely ironic, but better late than never. He's also saying cryptos like nearly any new innovative technology can be used for good or bad purposes. The problem is that US companies seeking to be compliant and use the tech for good are left in limbo or for ripple worse because of a lack of clear predictive framework. Uh, my favorite quote from this article, we must also keep in mind that default rule in the American system innovative or innovation, sorry, is welcome absent some legal reason to oppose it. Words to live by. And this is actually funny overall because, you know, we do need Ripple in this country. Uh, we need it for CBDCs to run efficiently, right? There isn't anything similar to Ripple in the sense of the technology behind it. We could argue all day long that Hedera kind of offers the same thing, but it's not. Uh, at the end of the day, what the XRP ledger and what RippleNet does uh, combined is going to be massive on a huge scale that we can't even comprehend right now. Uh, it's hard to really put it into words, but uh, the best way that I could you know, say it is all money will move over something like the XRP ledger. Now, I'm not saying that it's going to be all the money moving over the XRP ledger because there's at some point in time, right, you know, uh, we need to reconsider the fact that there will be some sort of technology that comes out that is going to compete with XRP. Now, again, uh, I think XRP and Ripple has technology that is far beyond most assets in this game. And as I mentioned before, you know, if it does bridge all the CBDCs together, definitely I could see most of the money, if not all of the money, moving across the Ripple net and XRP ledger, utilizing XRP as the main fee burn. Now, I thought this was actually very interesting to quote here because, you know, we are seeing, you know, Jay Clayton, who is the one who pretty much brought this uh, SEC lawsuit, you know, in front of our faces, you know, into the light, I should say. Um, and, and it's funny because he's talking about regulatory clarity as if, you know, everybody should pretty much know about it or, you know, it, he's talking in a hypocritical sense about it as well because the way that he went about this lawsuit is just absolutely hysterical and embarrassing overall for uh, the SEC. Now, again, I do believe in regulatory clarity and I do think that regulations need to come into this space. And I know a lot of people hate the idea of this because they don't want the government to have their hands on crypto. It defeats the purpose. But at the end of the day, how do you expect your favorite altcoin or your favorite you know, asset in general to grow at exponential rates when it won't be utilized by enterprise use cases or government use cases, etc., right? You know, for example, if Hedera or XRP was utilized by government banking systems to move trillions of dollars over their networks every single day, you know, the growth for that asset will grow immensely. You know, at the like, sure, you know, it's regulated. You know, it it, it pretty much takes away the idea of decentralization if you will in a quotation mark um but at the end of the day you know we do need regulations in the space for you know these assets to grow at these massive rates because at some point in time xrp will be utilized in the future financial system uh the same way hedera will as well you know hedera being the security layer uh, XRP, of course, being the bridge asset. We already kind of spoke about this multiple times. I'm not going to reiterate it m multiple times as well. I'm just going to say that that's how they will be used. And, you know, if we want them to grow, 
in a sense of what they are going to be utilized for, we need that regulatory clarity. So regulatory clarity, in my opinion, is, is should be fully supported by anybody in crypto overall if you want to see these assets grow and crypto taken seriously because lately it's just been a mockery of what crypto should be uh, overall. But I do also want to talk about this tweet coming from XRP underscore Stuart. So this is actually a trans, uh, translation of this tweet here. Now, this is saying this is important and Panama cannot be left behind. If we want to be a true technology and uh, entrepreneurship hub, uh, we have to support cryptocurrencies. We will be preparing a proposal to present at the assembly. If you are interested in building it, you can contact me. Uh, and this is actually interesting because this is talking about uh, Bitcoin kind of being implemented overall in terms of, uh, you know, El Salvador, for an example, right? And the quote here that's interesting is it says outcomes established the company and the team in Brazil with many companies in production and with a strong sales pipeline. During the last two years under his leadership, Ripple also expanded the presence with customers in Argentina, Chile, Peru, etc. Uh, and then also we see which addresses 80% plus of the market in cross-border payments. And we also see in El Salvador as well. Now, the interesting part about this right now is we also see this tweet here from Coindesk, right? And this is talking about the U.S. cannot deny Bitcoin as a currency once it has been established as a legal tender in El Salvador. Uh, Ovik says it would take a level of intervention in El Salvador's affairs, which I don't think the U.S. wants to get involved in. Now, the interesting thing about this is that I think this is completely wrong, this statement here, because... Overall, XRP has already been established in multiple areas of the world as a currency. You know, we already kind of talked about this roughly where it's kind of set up in terms of the overall market. Uh, but we're seeing this tweet come out after seeing this article talking about El Salvador president announces to make Bitcoin legal tender in his country. I've kind of talked about this overall. Um, but the thing in that's interesting about this is how badly... Uh, this is set up because if we read this tweet here, we see the average Bitcoin transaction fee over the past month has been around US dollar $12 overall. The medium wage or the median wage of a waiter in El Salvador in is USD 2,358, uh, which is about six uh, dollars and forty six dollars a day so they are paying almost two times what they make a day in a bitcoin transaction fee overall so the thing that's funny about this is we've already kind of discussed overall that ripple is better in terms of fees etc like this a and for the most part like we even see it over here where this is another tweet that's talking about Jed McCaleb, David Schwartz, and uh, Arthur Brito, sorry, uh, created XRP by solving all the problems of Bitcoin back in 2012. So overall, you know, if we look here, there's no reason why Bitcoin should have been adopted in El Salvador, to be honest, uh, especially with the fees as high as they are. XRP could have easily have been, you know, implemented here. And from the looks of it, I, I believe that it already has been. Uh, we see it even here, right? Which... You know, at the same time, you know, this this tweet here could be argued the fact that, you know, the U.S. will get involved no matter what if it involves money, right? Bitcoin could become one of those scrutinized assets in this space uh, because we've already seen it with XRP, right? XRP was deemed a currency by so many other, you know, locations in the in the world and utilized in that way. And look at what's happening to Ripple and XRP right now. So why would it be different for Bitcoin in general? So I could definitely see Bitcoin coming under scrutiny of the SEC uh, because at the end of the day, you know, it, being based as a currency in one place of the world doesn't mean that, you know, it's out of the clear because uh, XRP was a currency in multiple multiple areas of the world and look at what's happening with that. So for me personally, um, yeah, I mean, Overall, I think at some point in time, we're going to see this really come out and say, you know, hey, it's obviously a currency. Uh, regulatory clarity is here to stay. And I think regulations are very good because like Garlinghouse said, you know, with innovative technology, we need regulations because at some point in time, companies will seek, you know, these businesses or these assets that, you know, are compliant that could use the tech to scale at greater heights to save a lot more money. 
and overall just offer a lot more in terms of what they are already doing and building on because currently we need to do better we need to scale at greater heights because at some point in time you know the technology that we run on now is just not viable anymore so cryptocurrencies offers so much more than just what we already have and like i said with xrp becoming the bridge asset which i purely see happening in the future very soon um I definitely see regulations coming into this space very soon, and I'm not going to be mad about it. And if you guys are pro crypto and you want to see these assets grow in value, uh, you wouldn't be mad about it either because it, it means good things overall. Yeah, sure, governments have their hands on it, whatever the case may be. It takes away the decentralization key factor. It doesn't matter at the end of the day because, listen, when your asset's up 400% or 500% because banks are signing on to it or you know whatever the case may be it's getting adopted massly it doesn't matter right you're making money it, it, at the end of the day that it is what it is but we knew at some point in time regulations were going to come into this space you know since 2011 2010 we knew regulations were going to be a thing at some point in time you couldn't get away with it forever <laughs> i mean it's just, it's just that simple um but I'm not going to sit here and pout and cry that regulations are coming to the to the space that's going to kill crypto. If anything, it's going to help it be more innovative and it's going to be helping it be adopted massively on, you know, a bigger scale to enterprise and government use. So, uh I'm very happy about this. I I think that we're going to be moving very soon into this sort of regulation uh space uh once this case is dropped because I think this case is getting very very close to seeing some sort of settlement or a dismissal overall uh, so i'm very happy about that but nonetheless i hope that you guys enjoyed this video let me know what you guys think about regulations and crypto let me know if you're pro or you know against it whatever the case may be uh, but nonetheless i hope that you guys are having a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are in this beautiful world this has been nick peace out